Hi. Do you like punching walls blindfolded? I know I do. You might be wondering how I'm doing this. Without hurting my hand. The key to punching a brick wall blindfolded lies in the diaphragm. Not that the diaphragm actually helps me punch the wall, but understanding the principle of how the diaphragm works will allow us to understand more generally how muscles work, and eventually you'll understand the trick. Before we can start punching walls, however, I need to tell you about the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the muscle that allows us to breathe. You might expect the lungs to work like a bellows, with the diaphragm pulling the rib cages together, pushing air out of the lungs. This makes sense because you have probably also been told that muscles contract in order to pull things together. But the diaphragm is different. When the diaphragm is activated, it causes the rib cages to push apart from one another, causing the lungs to expand and air to rush in. In its relaxed state, the fibers of the diaphragm are curved squashed against the organs below, but when the muscle tenses, it straightens out, pushing the rib cages outwards, causing air to flow in. So the easiest way for me to show that this doesn't just apply to the diaphragm is to use the pegs. As you can see, if I'm relaxed, I got nice soft boobies. I don't even know if that's PG! <laughs> but the way people usually show off their muscles, obviously, is they tense them. So when I tense the pecs, the arms go in, and that's hard muscle. But the muscle is sort of in its own way. So what I'm going to do, grab one arm, relax pec, pull it across. So now that's nice, soft, scrunched up muscle. So what's going to happen when I tense my pecs? The pick is pushing the arm, pushing the arm in completely the opposite way that the textbooks would predict. So the point, the sort of zero point between normal conventional tension and what I'm calling negative length tension is here. So the pecs push down to there, but past that point, they return there. Negative tension is, of course, just compression. But the reason I'm referring to negative tension is because I'm imagining this relationship being plotted on the length tension graph. I took the liberty to just add it here. The length tension graph is a one-dimensional model, and muscle fibers simply do not shrink below a certain point. So the muscle fibers do not shorten beyond a certain point, but rather they just disappear into a different dimension. But this isn't quantum physics, I'm just talking about the regular three-dimensional world we live in. So the length is converted to height or width. But for those who don't like graphs, let's just move on to see how is this useful and how does it help you punch walls. That relationship that happens with the pecs also happens with the lats. So if my lats are relaxed, I've got range of motion, my arms are at my side, I can move my arms across. But if I tense my lats, my arms come out a bit. So this point is the zero point on that sort of linear plane. But it, it's a 3D point. So it's just here. If I put my arm out here, it returns there. Out here, there. So literally, going forward or backwards, or in any direction, it's the same signal going from your brain to your lats. All it does is tense. So, that, 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 that. It's the same signal going to the back muscle. I call this point the same point. After Akira Toriyama, who unfortunately passed away recently, and you've probably figured out the trick by now. 
if I simply get that reference point, put it by the brick, I'm not really hitting the wall. I'm just hitting my chest as I do it in time. This has application for the bench press. If you arc your back, go up and through, you can activate the lats and push up with that. And the research shows that experts do do that. And that the arc, the path of the bar goes sort of up and then through. And they have some complete bullshit explanation about the glenoid fossa or something. They're just trying to explain it away. They don't understand it. It's the lats. That's what's doing that. And also, what I think is most important is for people in wheelchairs, they're taught to just go through like this. And that's going to put strain on your back and on your shoulders. If you can learn to just push like this, you've got a very weak force going backwards and a strong force going forwards. And it's bypassing the shoulders. You're not necessarily having to use arch your back as much. And that's the thing which I think is the most important lesson here. So if you want to spread that knowledge, consider taking the Toriyama challenge. All you need to do is find this point and find a way to punch something hard, impress your friends, put it on TikTok, whatever. And that, I believe, will honor Toriyama and hopefully help people in wheelchairs. So thank you for watching.